Hello everyone and welcome to another CCI Toronto checking in video where we reach out to industry professionals to see how they are coping with the uh, current situation. Uh, the goal of these videos is to spread a bit of positivity um, with everything that we have uh, going on. Uh, my name is Vic Prasad and I'm a manager of business development for Suncorp Valuations. And today I have a very familiar face, um, one that we all know of from uh, your Condo Connection uh, series, the video series from CCI Toronto. Um, he's also the Vice President of Client Operations for Crossbridge Condominium Services. Welcome, Murray Johnson. Hey, Vic, how are you? I'm doing good, thanks. It's, uh, it's good to have you here. And um, we're just going to ask you a few questions about everything that's going on right now and, and see, how, uh, see how you're coping. So how have, uh, how have you been adjusting to the, uh, the new work arrangements and uh, you know, your day-to-day -day, uh, you know, uh, goings-ons? How's it going for you? Man, it, you know, it's, surprisingly, it's going really well. Um, I mean, like everyone else, I've got a little bit cabin fever going on. I wouldn't mind the weather being a little warmer and getting outside a bit, but uh, we'll have time. Yeah, the cold weather is kind of keeping us inside, so uh, that's actually a good thing, right? Yeah, well, I'll, you know, most of the spring cleaning's done, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I'd say, uh, being home like this and, and having to set up my office, you know, I'm usually in front of the camera, like today. Right. Um, but I, I, I also get to see what goes on behind the camera, and, and uh, the way I have my camera now, I can't move it around, but my office is a recording studio for the CCI articles. And now it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, a webinar studio with, with lighting and, and so forth in here. It's, nice. it's been a lot of fun, really. Yeah. yeah. But, and, and I'll tell you, uh, I don't think I've attended more webinars in such a short period of time as I have in the last month or so. I know. I know. And one of the things that I've seen is that the attendance at these, uh, these webinars is just phenomenal, right? Compared to, uh, even, you know, I usually do some in-person presentations there and, and the numbers are, you know, 2025 20, and you're up to like a hundred people at these webinars. So it's great. Oh, sure. I was, I, I uh, sat in on one. I just watched it. I didn't participate. 740 participants. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's oh, just good. crazy. But there's yeah. a couple of things I miss too, you know, um, I miss hugging my grandkids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got, I got to tell you a quick story. Yeah. Uh, we got a call from my son. He said, uh, what are you doing? And we, well, nothing. We're just sort of chilling here. He said, come out to the driveway. And we, we stepped outside the house and there he was with his pickup and the three kids were in the back of the pickup. Yeah. They had a, a radio, a Bluetooth speaker playing a rock song. Yeah. One had a guitar, one had a karaoke mic. The other one had a tambourine. Even the neighbors came out to see the concert. That's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. It was great. So doing things like that. So how's, uh, how's work? How's, uh, well, yeah, it's, work it's situation. I know we all, you know, we all have to adjust to this change, but how are you adjusting to the change? Well, I'm doing pretty good. I mean, I've always had the ability to, to work remotely. Right. Um, uh, I always thought I had to be in the office. I go in a half a day a week now and I'm doing okay. everything from home. Yep. And I don't think I've ever been so busy. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm getting loads of stuff done here. It's great. Yeah. yeah. And, and for such a large company like uh, Crossbridge, how are you managing to stay connected with, uh, with all those employees? Yeah, there's, uh, there's just over 500 of us, but uh, roughly a hundred are head office staff and the rest are all out in the field, all operations. Um, our, our working system for all our managers is office 365. Okay. And, and, uh, we set up two webs, uh, two email addresses. One goes with the manager and one stays with the site. Okay. Um, so we're able to connect with everybody and, they're able to connect with each other like that. So right. it's pretty good that way. And all the head office staff has, has always had this ability. So, right. Um, but I mean, look what I've had to learn in a, in a short period of time. I mean, you know, old timers like me, we don't, we don't learn things fast, but you know, zoom. And uh, of course there's uh, uh, you know, go to meeting and uh, Google yeah. hangouts and all of these things that we've had to learn yeah. and the good old fashioned emails and such. And, and uh, I've been using that uh, that antique I've got in my office here. The, what do you uh, telephone? That's it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're staying connected, and uh, you know most of it's done by email, and it gets too complicated. We'll pick up the phone. Right. 
right? So have you seen any, any benefits? You know, I, I know we are all socially distanced and trying to stay away from each other. Have you seen any, any benefits uh, from this arrangement? Yeah, well, you, you know, part of my job is to be there and offer some, some mentoring and guidance to the, to the managers and to the regional managers for right. those unique problems. But I, I find that they're sort of tempering what they're asking me. Like, it's really critical when they ask me now. Right. Um, and I don't get those walk-ins in my office anymore. That used to be about a third of my day. Yeah. So with that gone, I'm, I've become so productive. It's, it's been really, really great. Uh, but one thing I've noticed is that the, the boards have been really open uh, to virtual meetings. Yeah. They're, they're reading their packages before they come to the meeting, which is, you probably heard it for so many years. Some of them would walk in and open the package in the meeting. Right. Um, so they, they've, they're really catching on with this virtual stuff. And I'm hoping that virtual stuff like this, that these kinds of meetings, like you and I are doing right now. Right. Uh, throw in four or five more faces there and there's your board meeting and that could be done midday. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, and I'll tell you, a thought occurred to me the other day. Um, we're going to lose a lot of managers um, when they reach retirement age and I'm getting closer to that too. And that's all the experience going, going out the doors. So how do we keep those people a couple of years longer while, right. while the youngsters get their experience? And if you can take those those night meetings away, I think most of us would stay that extra year or two to, yeah. to help that. Definitely. Yeah. So, I mean, on the other side of it, you know, what are the challenges you're seeing working with, uh, you know, condominiums and boards, um, you know, during this time? Yeah, I mean, physically, I think we've got it down. And like just about every other management company, if the manager's on site, and they don't have to be all the time. There's a lot of administration in what we do. But when they're on site, we close that office door. Under no circumstances is anybody coming in. You know, we've got to have that social distancing. Right. There's a, a few things they have to do when they're on site. And I think the boards are, are accepting that. That's the physical side. But what worries me is the financial side. We've been hearing it. I know you've been hearing it too. Before the pandemic, you know, insurance fees were going way up and costs were climbing, et cetera. Um, and now we're seeing boards are concerned, good for them, about their, their residents um, lose, losing their jobs or being laid off, whatever it may be, and not having the income that they normally have. Yeah. So boards were talking about cutting fees or, or uh, forgiving uh, non-payment, bypassing the lien process. That's been a bit of a struggle to, to help them understand that those are short-term deferral issues. You know, you give somebody a couple of months off and they're not working now. When they do start working, you know, the problem's exacerbated. They have to pay more. You're really not helping anybody. The government's got the programs and, and we as a company share all the links and that kind of stuff. I think for a lot of them are, are starting to come on board. My problem is when I sit down in front of a, a director and say, look, don't, don't cut the fees. Don't skip the lien process. There are other ways. It's hard not to sound like a, a heartless son of a something, right? I know, especially in these times, right? I mean, you know, um, everyone's looking for a break, but then, you know, there's, there's, there's still going to be financial responsibilities that we have to meet, right? So. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and I hope that in the end, it will work out for most people. I mean... You know, here we are, what's, what's today's date? April 24th, or yeah, 24th. And yesterday we heard that, that it looks like we've, we've lowered the curve. It looks like maybe we're on the other side of the peak, that sort of thing. Yeah. We just got to stay the course, you know, yeah. just stay the course. So I guess on that note, what, uh, what advice would you have for condominium residents during this time? I, you know, they're in some of the, the, the residents in high rise buildings are in very you know, close quarters and small areas. What would be your overall advice for um, condominium residents? Well, I think, you know, the same thing I'd say, I'd say to anybody that was in a detached home or any other, you know, any other type of housing, you have to assume that somebody around you is, is positive. They've got the virus. We right. know that a lot of people are asymptomatic, so they don't know they have it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so in the building, you, you, especially in a high rise, you have to think, okay, if somebody's got it, maybe on my floor, 
Maybe they grab the handle on the garbage chute. Maybe they press the button on the elevator. And so I think you, you have to have that extra level of due diligence. You know, no matter how luxurious the high rise is, right. it's a small footprint with a lot of people, which makes it high density. Right. And so there's always somebody touching something, coughing somewhere. When you step outside that door into the corridor, it's, it's like you or I stepping into the grocery store. Yeah, you know, hey, are you keeping your distance and back off Jack and that kind of stuff? But, but it's really about uh, protecting yourself and protecting others, right? Yes, yeah. No, so I, I, on the assumption that, you know, everybody has it and, and you know, that way we can, we can all try and stay safe. So. Well, that extra, extra due diligence, you know, it, it's really good. The other thing is, is we're, we're seeing a little bit of, of problems with people who have uh, met that criteria. They're either showing symptoms, right. they've traveled internationally, or they've tested positive, or they've been in contact with somebody that tested pro positive. Right. You know, and people, people get confused with all the terms we're using. So I'm going to go back and use some old fashioned terms. Self isolating is what we do to avoid uh, uh, spreading it. Right. Right. Quarantine is what we do when we have it. And that means, no, you don't go out the hallway to the garbage chute. You, you don't walk outside. You don't go in the elevator. You are quarantined for at least 14 days, symptom free in your suite. And we get a little bit of confusion there. They say, well, I'm in the building, so I'm quarantining. I'm not going yeah. outside, but yeah. you've got all those people in there, you know? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So we, we, I, I just think this, it has to be a little bit of extra diligence on everybody's part. And the more we do that, the sooner we're going to be out of this. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for uh, taking the time today uh, to, to chat with us here and, um, to continue spreading some positivity with this uh, great video series we have. And, uh, you know, stay safe, take care of yourself, and um, we'll talk soon. You too. Be safe and take care. Bye-bye. This is Tanya Halleck, the president of CCI Toronto. CCI Toronto can help your condo achieve social and financial success. Thank you for listening.